The play opens at midnight, the spookiest hour of the night. We are on the battlements of the castle Elsinore, the home of the Danish royal family, and a couple of guards are on watch. They're pretty spooked. Apparently, the castle is haunted. Horatio, Hamlet's friend, doesn't really believe in ghosts and assures the men that nothing will appear tonight, except that something does. The ghost of old Hamlet, the recently deceased king, materialises right in front of them, freaking everyone out. Horatio demands answers from the ghost, but in the tradition of Shakespearean ghosts, it refuses to answer. When the rooster crows, the ghost disappears. Clearly, something is not right in Elsinore. The men debate whether or not the ghost is a good or an evil spirit, but Horatio decides that, whatever the answer, Hamlet must be told about the haunting. Later on, everyone is gathered in the royal court. Claudius tells everyone to cheer up. After all, the old King Hamlet has been dead for a couple of months now, and Claudius has married the widow Gertrude, so everyone should really be celebrating. He is also trying to figure out what to do about Fortinbra, the Prince of Norway, whose father was killed by old King Hamlet. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything. This happened before the play began. Fortinbra wants to invade Denmark to avenge his dead father, but Claudius reckons he's got it all sorted and sends off some of his advisers to deal with it. Next, Claudius imparts some fatherly wisdom on Laertes, the son of his closest advisor, Polonius. Laertes wants to go to France to study, but needs Claudius's permission first. Lucky for him, Claudius is still trying to butter everyone up, so he agrees. Then Claudius moves on to his nephew slash stepson, Hamlet. He and Gertrude tell Hamlet to suck it up and get over his grief. Gertrude tells Hamlet that everything dies eventually, so he shouldn't be so sad about his dad. It's just the big circle of life, right? When everyone has left the room, Hamlet collapses under the weight of his grief. He tells the audience that he can't bear the fact that his mother married his uncle less than a month after his father died. He is so upset that he wishes he was dead. Poor Hamlet. Horatio and the rest of the guards arrive and tell Hamlet the strange news of the ghost. Hamlet cheers up a little bit. Maybe he can see his father again. Elsewhere, Laertes has packed his bags and is saying farewell to his family. He warns his sister Ophelia to stay away from Hamlet. After all, Hamlet is only after one thing, and her virginity is the most important thing she has, so she had better protect it. After Laertes leaves, Ophelia admits to Polonius that she and Hamlet have been getting pretty close. Polonius is worried and repeats Laertes' warnings. He also thinks that Hamlet is up to no good. Later that night, Hamlet and the gang have gathered on the battlements of the castle, waiting for the ghost. When it appears, it beckons Hamlet to follow it. When they are alone, the ghost reveals to Hamlet that he did not die of a snake bite, like the official record shows. Instead, he was murdered by Claudius. Hamlet is shocked and swears that he will have his revenge. He makes his friends swear that they won't tell anybody about the ghost. He also tells them that from now on, he is going to pretend to go a little crazy. So we end the act where we started, at midnight, in darkness, and in the middle of a juicy mystery. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on Hamlet, check out our summary of Act 2.